Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of From Page to Stage. I'm your host Wendy Corner and this podcast is for you if you are an author. This is aimed at authors who have maybe already done their page and their stage. Maybe this is you if you've done the page only and you're not ever so sure about getting onto the stage yet. So come and get some inspiration. This podcast features interviews with people who have done both, both the page and the stage. Some people started on the page, went to the stage. Some people started on the stage, went to the page. It goes hand in hand. That's what I'm, I'm really aiming that you will grasp on this one. We also have interviews of people who've done the page, not quite got to the stage yet. And so those people are sharing their stories very often for the first time. So if you come under any of those categories, I think I've covered all bases, welcome. Today, I am so excited to share with you an interview with the lovely Josette Diaz. Now, I could tell you a bit about Josette, but you know what? She knows herself better than I do. So I'm going to back that one back over to Josette and say, welcome and do share with us how you got to where you are now. Ah, oh, thank you, Wendy. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, as you heard, my name is Josette Diaz, and I am a self-awareness coach for women in midlife. And I'm located in the United States in California. I'm lucky to live in Southern California where it's nice and sunny most of the time. And um, I work with highly successful women and I take them from feeling like they are successful only on paper to living a joyously successful life from the inside out. And I use creative uh, self-development strategies to assist women in aligning with themselves so that they live life with freedom and clarity and joy. Mm. So that's what I do. Love it, love it. So I'm gonna ask you, we see that beautiful book in the background. Yeah. That's why we're here, isn't it really? Because we're quite <laughs> excited about this. Tell us, what prompted you to write your chapter? Well, actually, well, before we do that, yeah. tell us about the chapter. Okay. Yeah. So the chapter is, um, the, the book itself is about transformational stories. And so you are to, to write a chapter about a book that influenced you. And so I started thinking about what book that I read that I found the most influential, something that was consistent in my life that influenced me. Mm -hmm. And I had... I thought about a couple of other titles, but I really came down to the first book when I was 21 that really sparked something significant in my life, taught me several different things, continues to unfold as I revisit it every time. And that is A Course in Miracles. Right. So um, I was introduced to this book uh, by a mentor and I took a, a class that she decided to hold. And that was the beginning of the unfoldment. Right. Okay. And so it, it has a profound effect. It continues to have a profound effect. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that, would you? Yes. Well, so A Course in Miracles, if you aren't familiar with it, it has three different books within one book. And so there's the text of the book itself. And then there is a student workbook and then a teacher manual. And so uh, the pieces that I pay attention to is the text and the uh, workbook for students. Mm -hmm. And that workbook for students gives you a lesson every day for one full year. So 365 lessons. Mm -hmm. And each one is assisting you with um, releasing the mind of what it conceives as its reality so that you stay connected with the peace that you, that all of us are born into mm -hmm. and allows you to, to serve your life with love, think with love, behave with love, interact with love, and to release what we consider to be all of the different belief systems that 
um, we are born into, that we adhere to, that we relate to out in the world. <laughs> Sounds, it's a lot. It's a lot, but it's wonderful. It's a wonderful book. I confess that when I went into it, I just couldn't get on with it. I think it was the language that, yeah, I, I will go back and revisit it. But it was, yeah, it, it was, it didn't gel with me. So, yes, it's something that I yeah. will go back and revisit. But the other thing is I had it on audio. So I'm wondering whether it would make more sense if it, if it was in front of me text wise. Yes, it probably would help because um, what I find, you know, when you first get into, into A Course in Miracles, you have to be remind, know that when you start this, um, this journey, it is written in a Christian language. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that doesn't resonate with you, you may not find this enjoyable and it might not be the right path for you. Mm -hmm. So there's many paths. It's only one way. Hmm. And, um, and so if you can interpret what is being said on the page, it's not a religion. It's not asking you to believe anything. In fact, in A Course in Miracles, it states that you don't have to understand it. You don't even have to believe it. It's the process of reading it and, um, and your subconscious knows what to do with it. And so it's really just a, a guidebook to, like I said, let go of the things that we hold ourselves um, imprisoned by just by believing in uh, what exists in the world, if that makes sense. So an example could be the first lesson is to take an object in the room and say, um, I look at the lamp, the lamp has no meaning to me. Because if you consider in your home, you look at a lamp and you automatically just kind of recall, oh, when I bought that lamp, where it came from, who I was with, not every time you look at it, maybe, but it is something that you think of off and on. And so it's releasing that attachment. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I think if, if I go back and look at it again or listen to it again I'm in a very different space now from when I right. picked it up five years ago so yeah. um and and as, as the, the books that that I'm aware because I know a couple of the other authors in your in your book mm -hmm. the books that they pulled on have again they said that they've revisited and revisited because yeah. the thing is every time you go back to a book you've changed mm-hmm and you see something else in it that, right. well, it wasn't there last time. Yeah. Well, it was there. You weren't. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. You've, you've, um, you've given me that, that sort of nudge to go back and, oh, and nice. check it out. Yeah, Way good. down in my library. <laughs> yeah. Dust it off. <laughs> no. Yes. 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 I mean, I'm audience, a bit of a, personal interjection here I'm on the road and I have very few books with me because I have literally 20 kilos weight limit so most of my stuff is either audio or kindle because much as I love the feel of a book and mm -hmm. turning those pages over it weighs and when you've only got a 20 kilo weight limit you have to every, go with the electronic version. Every little morsel counts. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I've, I've got travel scales and everything. People <laughs> even charged me for being a kilo over. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Well. Anyway, that's a, that's a beside the point. <laughs> so we've got this beautiful book that you felt compelled, certainly drawn yeah. to share Yes. The impact that the Course of Miracles has had on your life and continues to have. Yes. Do you revisit it? I do. I, I wait for the call. So like this year, I started um, doing the workbook again. Mm -hmm. And I did something a little bit different this year. Although I still reference A Course in Miracles, I've mm -hmm. been following... There's uh, an author by the name of Pam Grout who wrote A Course in Miracles Experiment. 
And so she rewrote each of the lessons in today's verbiage. So right. she's made them a little fun. Uh, she's done it in a story uh, storytelling style. And so I've been using that to go through each day because I wanted something that was really light, kind of mm -hmm. easy for me to reference. And when I'm actually unclear from her storytelling, just because that's how I've interpreted it, I go back to A Course in Miracles and kind of double check what it is that the lesson is. And so I did that to just have a good time with it. And um, in previous years, I've, I haven't, before this year, it's been a couple of years since I picked it up. So mm -hmm. I pick it up whenever I feel called to, whenever I feel like it's time for me to revisit some of those lessons mm -hmm. because they truly stay with you. Mm -hmm. And it's something that you consider um, in your everyday life once you've gone through them and yeah. you kind of remind yourself of the process. And so it, I wait until I get that inner calling from myself when it's mm -hmm. time to revisit again. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that's what prompted you to be part of this book. Mm. Tell us a bit more about your speaking work, because you're not new to speaking. No. So share a bit more about that, would you? Yes. Um, I deliver a message to women in midlife about being their own soulmate. And this Sorry, is about being what I'm, I missed that. Be the, to be their own soulmate. Own soulmate. Right. Thank you. Yes. Because we, we speak of self-care a lot. We hear that often and we hear it being applied to things that are internal and important, yet there is no real um, guide for how to do that. And when we think about what it is to love ourselves and to care for ourselves, and especially as, as women, I carve women out and that's what um, my business is all about what my work is all about because I feel so strongly to empower women. Mm -hmm. I'm on my own empowerment journey and the things that I have learned are the things that I teach and bring women into because we're, we are raised to be the nurturers. We are raised to um, not consider ourselves first Mm -hmm. And by the time we get into midlife, we start to recognize that these identities that we've attached ourselves to and have lived vicariously through these different identities, whether it's a mother, career woman, devoted spouse, um, you know, et cetera, a loyal daughter, then we start to recognize that we didn't prioritize ourselves and we internally don't really feel very happy. Yeah. or we can't figure out what's the missing link. Mm -hmm. And so being your own soulmate is the message that I deliver to my audiences because it's so key to look at the soulmate as not being someone outside of you that you expect to feed you, that you feed yourself, yes. that everything comes from within. And when you're living a life from within, you then bring about everything outside of yourself. Mm. And so we kind of have it inside out. And so being your own soulmate is reversing the process so that women can learn to love themselves on such a deep level that they become empowered and they start living a life through their own genius. Mm. And it only takes one person to spread that kind of message that then ripples out to everyone else. So we all touch each each other in so many different ways exactly yes so, beautiful so that's my um, message so that this is this is your message and this is how mm -hmm. so, so tell us a bit how do you do the speaking bit do you do it in front of um have you got a community do you do it online do you do it in person meetups share with us will you yeah. the the sort of things you get up to Yes, um, I have a Facebook group that's called Be Your Own Soulmate. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a meetup group where I work with women on bringing them a creative practice to get in touch with their um, their own intuition. And mm -hmm. that is called an artist, an artist Guide to Journaling. And that's an online meetup group. Okay. And um, I also speak at networking events live. I do summits online. I have one coming up in uh, August that is called She Leads, which is a uh, vision, 
not a, I don't believe it's called a vision quest, but it's she leads and it's a Facebook group. Leads as and, in L-E-A-D? Yes, lead. like leader. Yes. yes. And um, and so I I do a variety of different speaking online and in person. So I do panels, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. So I'm I'm gonna ask you then, which came first, the speaking or the writing? <laughs> it's definitely the speaking. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you um when you run your own business, you do a lot of social media. So you're doing a lot of writing anyways. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot different than writing a chapter or writing a whole book. Uh, it's completely different. Yet at the same time, it's kind of a precursor. Uh, but speaking was really the first thing that I started with. Sure, sure. Yeah. Because the other thing is, as you just pointed out there, you've been publishing your own writing for a while. <laughs> Yes. And when I've when I've asked interviewed few few people, I said, Oh well, my first um oh well I won a poetry competition when I was 10. And mm. I had somebody who said they did a screenplay at it wasn't a screenplay, but, but they wrote a play age yeah. 12. And that's actually been taken to the stage and she's seen it in, wow. in real life. And I go, okay. So the writing came first. The point is the published bit, as in what we what we see behind you, that book thing mm -hmm. it's not the only thing it's just like I find a number of, of the the speakers that come through the door who go oh I'm an author I'm not a speaker and we go <laughs> what what's what's the definition of public speaking and so, well, it's, it's, it's a stage and and I've got a microphone in my hand and I'm spouting forth yeah. and I'm going I can't do that <laughs> and again well you don't it's have true. to yeah. that's not your only platform mm -hmm. what do you mean I said, can you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody yes hello yeah. podcast there you go stage <laughs> yeah so a lot of it is actually redefining for people what what they're again picking up on your course of miracles letting go <laughs> of the the internal script, if you will, what what I'm mm -hmm. my that that hard and fast rule that I don't do public speaking because I'm right. I'm, I'm, I'm 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 not a speaker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm an author. Right. Well, yes, your words have power, but that's whether they're written down or whether you speak them out. It's true. And if you don't speak them out, your book's not going to do it that well. Yeah. You got to speak about it. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. for you. Go, going back in time, did you have any mm -hmm. writing in your childhood? You know, that's a really good question. I recently just did a post about this because one of the things that I came to realize, I I jumped into this book on impulse. There was just something I just went yes immediately and did it. And then I had some time to process when I submitted the chapter Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what was it? There was a part of me, I hadn't even actually analyzed this, even though I knew it was happening in the background in my mind, is that there's this, this part of me as a little girl, um, when I was in elementary school, I moved around a lot with my family. So I was in a different school almost every year. And so getting academically settled was always difficult for me. Sure. And um when I was about, oh, probably 10, uh, I was in a school for a, a, more than a year and I had to write an essay. And mm -hmm. I remember writing the essay and all of a sudden something just kind of came over me and I wrote like crazy and it felt so good. It was like this rush of like, I knew exactly what I was saying. It felt passionate. It felt exciting. And I got a very good grade on it. And my teacher really complimented me on my writing. Mm. Now, grammar, not so much, but my writing was good. And so I, I got like a B plus or something like that. Mm. And I couldn't wait to share it with my mom. And um, my parents had recently divorced. And so I showed it to my mother mm -hmm. and she read it. And she said, who wrote this for you? Mm. And I was heartbroken. Mm -hmm. So I found myself kind of slipping into that little space where I kept myself safe. And 
Mm -hmm. having the opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Kind of slink back in and having the opportunity to write a chapter in a book, she was jumping up and down. And so the main reason that I jumped into the book, it was for my inner child, my little girl who really wanted to show that she had something to say and that she could write Mm -hmm. and she could do it well. And so that was part of my, my reason why. I love it. I love it. Um, Again, one of the things I'm finding with an awful lot of particularly collaboration book authors, when they're writing their story, there's an element of catharsis goes on. Mm. When you get actually tell your story. Yeah. And this is why a number of the authors I'm finding need a break. They'll do the promotion for the book because it's part of the package. Right. But sometimes they're reluctant to do that. But but then it, it it's the actual saying of your story out loud. Mm. It can be quite a challenge, which is why, and we've spoken about this before, I have my keen sense of a duty of care. So I'm very keen that, particularly if it was a traumatic tale, you don't appear on stage for therapy right. you need to work through to the wisdom and it's the wisdom that you're sharing yes you're going to tell the background put mm-hmm. in all the gory details because if you get mired in the trauma you can get re-traumatized and actually the audience can get traumatized as well and you don't want that you, you're going no. for the wisdom but i yeah. find that the the languaging is in is very important so that you you can still dig into the the emotion and the wisdom without the trauma right because I'm, I'm really here feeling for you for your little girl because yes yeah, she got squashed yeah and you, what you wanted to do is get some positive vibes from your mom yeah. and some pride and validation right. yeah but you know i think that if you um i've done a lot of inner child work mm-hmm so I was aware that that existed yeah. and knowing that I was giving to my inner child, that part of me that really wanted that acknowledgement, mm-hmm. I did it. Yes. So I was able to nurture her in that way mm-hmm. and bring something even better into the world for her. Yes. You are being your own little girl's soulmate. That's right. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right. Beautiful. It comes back. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, just, just saying that you're, you're authentic. You are living your purpose with everything you're doing. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank so you've you. got this book coming out when? June 25th. June 25th. So excited. Yes. Pretty soon. Audience. This is coming out the day before or two days before, depending on which side of the the dateline you're sitting. <laughs> we will put in the show notes how to get hold of the book, how to get hold of Josette, so that you can connect with her on as many levels as you want. But please do, because I think you can probably see this lady is worth getting to know. <laughs> that you've got you've got your Facebook page you've mentioned. Are there any other places that that the audience can go and check you out? Yes, um, Instagram mm-hmm. at Josette Diaz, and mm-hmm. I'm also on LinkedIn. Right. And mm-hmm. yes, so um, same name. I think there's a dash between my first and last name because there's okay. more than one of us. Oh, and there? yes, I know. I was surprised. <laughs> But again all of these inf- all this information will be in the show notes audience so you can go in there and go right which is my favorite platform i'll go for this one and you can connect that way beautiful so you've got this book that's coming out on the 25th of june mm-hmm. i'm going to ask you is there something else percolating for down the track oh you mean book wise well <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I I am considering it. Yes, I'm considering doing a book that's just singular, a solo book. 
Yeah, a solo yeah. book. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. The, the reason I, I get really coy and, and ask these questions is because the number of times when I've I've thrown this out and the the um guest wasn't necessarily ready for it, they've gone, <laughs> well, actually, yes. <laughs> on such and such. Really? Um, do we have a title? Um, well, I'm I'm kind of working. Have we got an exclusive? And I'm being really <laughs> cheeky, being really cheeky. I'm finding that once you've you've got the bug of writing, there's often mm -hmm. I could do this. You're obviously very much focused on the the publication of this one coming out now. Yes, get that. But maybe down the track, this solo book will come forward. I love it. We have dynamic show notes. So when you've got something else coming up, let me know. We will change the show notes. And actually, we'll probably have you back on for oh. a second bite at the cherry when you are again about to drop a new book. Okay. So you got a deal. I'll be here. <laughs> Exciting. As we're kind of winding up, I'm, I'm wondering, how do you, because you, I mean, you've got your writing, whether you've done the the stuff on social media, the stuff from the book, how do you embody, when you go onto a stage, how do you take your words and embody them from page to stage? Can you share a bit about that, please? Yes, that's a really good question, because I think that that is something that um, takes a little bit of practice. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I've found is that the more I think about it in my head, the harder it is. Okay. Because if bodying is is you know melding bringing the harmony right within your mind and your body and so it's really when I can sink in and ground to my story mm -hmm. and recognize that I already know this story I wrote this story I live, I live this story, story. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and and not worry about everyone else in the outside and just get right into my heart mm. When I bring my focus in my heart and connect it to my mind, the words come out meaningful. They come out discerning, direct, and connected. Mm. And that is how I find it making a difference when I'm speaking mm -hmm. and I'm speaking about something that, you know, really means something to me and sharing a story that I know is going to help other women or other audience members. And, um, and that's what embodiment is for me. Thank you. Thank you. Because that's the thing, isn't it? When you connect your head and your heart, where mm -hmm. does the energy go through your voice? Yeah. And so when right. you're connected in that way, your voice shows it. There's that sense of connection. There's that sense of, I'm living this. Yeah. If there's that disconnect, then your audience can pick it up. Right. Whether conscious, mostly unconsciously, but there, there, there's just that. There's something. They notice something, right? And yeah. I think that that's also where you begin to magnetize people to your story yes. is if you're really staying centered in your heart at the same time, then you're going to magnetize the whole room. Because mm -hmm. people are drawn to your energy, they're yeah. drawn to your authenticity. They'll feel it's, it. Exactly. And it's amazing mm -hmm. then that some of the words that come out of your mouth actually really resonate almost verbatim with what's going on in somebody else's head. Yeah. Really and if true. you can make that connection, mm -hmm. right. such a difference. Such a difference. Ooh, that's good stuff. Mm, that's it is, stuff. it is. Yeah, that's the magic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just that, as we're winding up, have I missed anything? Anything else you'd like to share? Hmm. Um, you know, there's one thing that I would like to end with mm -hmm. uh, because it's something that I truly believe, and this is for everyone, is sometimes we think things are not for us. Mm -hmm. Or we push them aside and we decide that, oh, no, that's not for me. I'm not, I'm not that person. And then they're going to find you. The things that are meant for you 
are going to find you. And if it shows up in your life and you've ever maybe wanted it, make sure that you consider it. Mm. Because even if you say no to it, it may come back around again and it might have to really get your attention. <laughs> and that sometimes isn't always fun. <laughs> so, you know, just recognize that what's meant for you is going to show up and really consider what is in your heart to deliver. Mm. Thank you. That's real food for thought, isn't it? Mm. Thank you so much to say for sharing with us your page to stage. Thank you. From us, bye for now. <laughs>